Welcome to another episode of Essential Experts with myself, Simon Charles. I'm the video broadcast manager here at Essential. And in this episode, I'm joined by Sarah Housley, who is head of consumer tech at WGSN. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So first of all, let's just kick off straight away. Tell us a little bit about your role at WGSN and your expertise overall. Yeah, of course. Well, I've been at WGSN a long time, more than 11 years now. So I originally trained in three-dimensional design, which basically means making physical things. It was a very, very broad um, training and background that I have. So then when I came to WGSN, I started off in the Home Build Life content team, which was looking at interiors, home, and lots of different lifestyle trends. And I gradually started to specialize more on the lifestyle side. So I was looking at everything from travel and hospitality to wellness to pet products, which was a really fun area to manage, and also design futures and innovation. And that's the area that I started to specialize more in. Um, and now I write our future innovations forecast. And I recently moved over to our new consumer tech website to launch that. And I'm head of content for that website. So WGSN obviously launched a new vertical this year, which is consumer tech, which is what we're talking about. Uh, many people that are watching will obviously know WGSN for its fashion, its beauty, interiors, and most recently food and drink forecasting. So why is now the good time to venture into consumer tech? Well, much like food and drink and beauty, this was a topic that we already um, talked about a lot at WGSN and published reports and forecasts for. So we already had a lot of technology coverage on the website. And we knew that our clients loved it, really responded to it and wanted to see more of it. So from our point of view, we knew that our clients wanted more. And then if we looked at the industry and the state of the world, which is obviously a big part of our job as forecasters, we could see that during the pandemic, consumer technology just became absolutely crucial. And the things that people wanted from their tech products really started to change and to evolve. So we knew that now was the time to really bring our expertise in and to work with our clients and our subscribers more closely in that tech area and offer that more specialized expertise and insight through our forecasts as well. Amazing. So you've obviously predicted the trends to watch in consumer tech for CES 2022 and beyond. First of all, tell us a little bit about CES and why is it important? So CES is amazing. It's the Consumer Electronics Show, and it is the biggest trade show in the world for technology and for consumer technology. It takes place in Las Vegas every year in January, and it's really about going and seeing the new products, the new innovations. You get to see new research, like straight out of the lab. It's, you can see some really, really raw innovation there. But it's also where a lot of the big companies like Samsung or Sony or LG show off their, their latest launches and their innovations. So it's where the tech industry starts the year with a bang and really sets the agenda for the year ahead. Amazing, it sounds great. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the trends to watch out for in CES 2022? Mm. So some of the trends that we expect to see this year are very much driven by what the trade show is focusing on this year. So CES has lots of different specialisms or categories and it launches new ones every year. So some of the new categories launching this year are food tech, so that's gonna be a big area, but also space tech, which is really exciting. So we published a report recently on space tech and space exploration. And at WGSM, we've identified this as a really big trend and area of innovation to watch over the next 10 years. And this is because the commercial space race is really heating up. So you've got lots of private companies starting to take normal people, relatively normal people into space. We're seeing the first um, consumer astronauts. And this is making the market much more lucrative and much more exciting for private investment. And we already know that one of the exhibitors is going to be a space company that is going to be showing a space plane. And you might think, well, why is space tech relevant if, you, if you're not actually a space company? It's because the innovations that are developed for space and for space exploration have a really solid track record of then translating to innovations that we can use here on Earth as well. So for example, the way that spacesuits are designed to withstand really extreme conditions and be really resilient and protect the, um, the body of the wearer, that can translate into things like how do you design active wear and how do you design clothing here on Earth as well, or exoskeletons for, for people as they start to age and they want to still be mobile. You're actually seeing exoskeletons um, launching on the market now that can keep people mobile and independent. And that kind of innovation has its roots in areas like spacesuits. So it's a really inspiring area for the whole tech industry. 
And that's one of the, the areas of the show floor we're definitely going to be covering in a lot of detail in January. That's it, really exciting. So actually my dream when I was younger of actually becoming an astronaut is, is a little bit closer to coming true now. That's amazing. <laughs> so I guess more widely thinking about it in terms of uh, what you're forecasting for 2022, uh, what, what are we expecting to see in the uh, consumer tech space? So one of the trends that we forecast is called sonic encounters. And this is all about how tech products are going to change our experience with sound. And this is really interesting for me personally, because I'm very interested in sensory design. So beyond just visuals, just the color of something or, or um, the shape of it, et cetera, what are the other sensory attributes that can make a product or an experience really exciting and really engaging? And sound is one of them, but it's an area that hasn't had a huge amount of focus because it's just much less tangible. Like humans really do, really kind of focus on sight as our primary sense. And we don't think about our other senses as much, but sound has a lot to offer. And audio technology is advancing really fast at the moment. You have all of the big tech companies bringing out spatial audio, which kind of positions the sound around you. So you, you can hear something through your headphones as you would hear it in, in a real environment. And that has really big implications for things like virtual reality, where we're in a virtual space, but we want to feel like we're in a physical space. And so we use sound positioned kind of around us to make it much more immersive. We're also seeing a lot of sound innovation in cars, which is to do with the, the future of autonomous driving and self-driving cars. So cars are gonna become much more about being entertainment spaces because there aren't gonna be drivers, they'll just be passengers. So new cars are coming out that are using sound in a very immersive kind of entertainment focused way so that the, the cabin of the car becomes almost like a cinema screen. It becomes a place that is super immersive and very theatrical in the way that it's using audio. So everything from wearables and small tech products like headphones through to big tech environments like cars or retail spaces or even the home is going to be impacted by these innovations that we're seeing in sound, which is just really exciting for, for anyone who works in design or innovation to see where that's headed. So uh, Sarah, tell me, how do you go about actually choosing these key trends? What is the methodology? So the methodology is very difficult to explain quickly because it's rich and complex, but we have just published um, a graphic, an animation that explains it beautifully. It's very creative. And that's the important thing about WGSN. The way we work is very creative. It's a mixture of insights and intuition and creativity. So it starts with researching and observing, collecting quantitative and qualitative data and then really layering it all together. We have experts all around the world looking at things that are happening and forecasting them into the future. Then we combine all of the information, we synthesize it, which is the really important part. We figure out what it all means and what it's all gonna to lead to. And then we're constantly debating and challenging it internally as well across our teams to kind of keep those trends current and keep those trends relevant and update them as things change. So obviously, the pandemic was a big curveball for trend forecasting. It changed a lot of the trends. It sped up a lot of the trends. Um, but also within tech specifically, new innovations can happen that completely change the market. So for example, if a big company was to launch some smart glasses next year, that would make that product category suddenly very, very interesting. Because at the moment, there's lots of scattered kind of small brands. Whereas if a big tech leader were to move in, we'd see that market sort of consolidate and become um, much more kind of dynamic for the consumer. So within tech specifically, there's lots of different signals we're tracking. And within WGSM more broadly, we have that wider landscape of trends and innovation, from everything from fashion, beauty. So you can see why it's not a short answer. Awesome. Now, Sarah, I know you sit on WGSN sustainability board. Uh, how has sustainability played into these trend choices? It's really interesting because it plays in at every level. So even a trend that might not seem like a sustainability trend will obviously be embedded now because we've come to the point, which is a really good point to be at, where everyone realizes that we're in a climate crisis. It's pretty much undeniable. So it's a, a hard time to be living through, but it also means that we're being sparked into action. So none of our trends can sit isolated from sustainability now. It's just a core concern. But sustainability plays out at a macro level and a micro level. So for example, companies need to 
redesign their entire ways of working to be more sustainable, but products also need to be made to be more sustainable. And that's an area that WGSN has a lot of um, impact in, specializing as we do in product design. So within tech, for example, if we're talking about a product trend, we would be talking about how a company needs to make a very high quality, long lasting product, not think about it for the short term, but really design for the long term. So that means they might be responding to that trend of immersive sound that I was talking about earlier, but the product they're making needs to really be made to last. It needs to be made responsibly with sustainable materials, and it needs to be made so that it can be recycled and reused at the end of its life. So it's all of these details that come in with the sourcing and the manufacturing, and also how it's sold to the consumer, because the consumer is going to be looking for those sustainability credentials. So they're going to be looking for, is it using recycled materials? Can it be recycled at the end of its life? Can I repair it myself? Those are really pertinent questions in tech. So even those product trends that don't seem like a sustainable product, they're going to need to be designed in that more responsible way. And a lot of the work we do at WGSN is helping clients to design in that more responsible way. And finally, Sarah, what is the trend you are personally most excited about for 2022? So the trend that I'm really excited by is direct to avatar design. And it really comes from the dawn of the metaverse and people spending so much more time in virtual worlds like Fortnite or Roblox or eventually in some of Facebook's kind of metaverse worlds that it's launching. And what excites me about direct to avatar design is that it's really freed from any physical constraints. So I think we're going to see designers and creatives getting just extraordinarily imaginative in how people might dress or what homes, what spaces they might live in, what kind of, what visuals they will want, what kind of um, sensory experiences they'll want. And given that we don't have to think about physical materials or physical colors or the laws of gravity, even in these virtual worlds, I think we are set to see some really exciting aesthetic subcultures come through. And I really love seeing what people are designing in these spaces already, like all of the liquid metals that are happening, all of the iridescent colors. It's all like really futuristic, really exciting. So that's the trend that I'm going to be watching next year and beyond. Amazing. That sounds so exciting. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.